Hello, hello, hello everybody, I am Scuttles and welcome to some exciting, let me say very exciting, news regarding Jurassic World Evolution 2. Announced just a couple hours ago, Jurassic World Evolution 2 will be coming to the Steam Store within this year of 2021. Very exciting news, I know, but also released apart from the trailer was a series of images which we are now going to take a look at today. In case you missed it, Jurassic World Evolution 2 had a series of exciting events shared with us today, including new dinosaurs, new terrains, new environments, and even the addition of complex aviaries in the sense that like things can actually fly around like they're in a cage instead of just like a preset animation, at least that's what it looks like, that's not actually confirmed yet, as well as aquatic creatures, with the reveal of the Mosasaurus at the very end of the trailer. That being said, that's not what we're here to talk about at the moment. Today we are actually here to talk about the 11 new images that have been shared on the JurassicWorldEvolution.com website. Starting with this one right here, we've got a series of three beautiful Brachiosaurus. Looks like there's two skins visible, maybe three, I can't really tell with that one in the further back. But as you can clearly tell with these frontmost two, there's clearly a darker one and a lighter one. But what you will immediately notice that was different with the regular Jurassic World Evolution game is the terrain. There are some beautiful snow-capped mountains in the background, beautiful trees of different colors, from this great big redwood up front to these smaller little sprucey looking trees in the back, and even some splashes of color in there such as these yellowing trees off to the side right here. It's just absolutely stunning. The models look incredible. It's this, I mean, let's be honest, this looks like it's straight out of Fallen Kingdom. It's absolutely beautiful. Like, there's just no other words for it. And I'm just incredibly excited for this game to be released. Like, can I, can I please just have it now? Maybe, please, question mark? I give you a kiss, Frontier, love you. <laughs> and it doesn't just stop there with the environment. Like, obviously, we're supposed to be looking at the beautiful Brachiosaurus in this, but there's so many other things we can see, too, like these little shrubs down at the bottom, even, like, some little dandelions sprouting up. It's just... This just actually looks like you're out in the middle of a forest and you've just happened to stumble up, or I guess, really, they would probably walk up on you, but a series of three beautiful Brachiosaurus. I know I'm saying beautiful a bunch, but I just can't help it. It's just... I mean, look at it. Come on, don't blame me. You think it, too. If you didn't think it, then you wouldn't be watching this video. <laughs> Moving on to the next image, we have the Amargosaurus. And now here, instead of having the huge snow-capped mountains in the background, we have a very drastic contrast of what looks to be more of a desert. We've got cactus everywhere, a bunch of arid climate plants from this little saguaro looking cactus thing. I don't actually know what it's called. And then we got the really big tall boys and the little tiny round boys, as well as all sorts of just like dried up yellowy looking grasses and reeds along the bottom. That's not what we're really going to be focusing on here. As you can tell, we have a new species added to the game, which is the Amargosaurus. Now, we've had Amargosaurus in the past through mods for Jurassic World Evolution, but we've never had anything actually made by them. And as you can quite clearly tell, these just look so much better than what we've had in Jurassic World Evolution. Jurassic World Evolution did look great, but if you just take some comparisons between the images I'm showing you here today and Jurassic World Evolution 2's variants, then you'll see that there's just so much more detail packed into all of these models and everything. And it's just really exciting to be able to take a look at that and see this upgrade that we're going to be able to get here without having to wait too much longer. Really not too much to touch on here with this image, apart from the fact that there is the new scenery and everything though, so we'll move on to the next one. And here we've got an Pseudoceratops. This is actually the first image that I saw, and I didn't know how to feel about it, if I'm being totally honest. My first impression was I didn't really like it, if I'm being totally honest. But, that also got me thinking, parts of this probably are in early development still, so if you do happen to see other things in this, there's no guarantee that it's gonna actually be released like that. There could very well be many things that we're seeing here today that will be changed, possibly even drastically, from the time that the game is actually released to the public. The complaints that I kind of had with this image just had to do with mainly these trees' weird-looking, like, 2D-ness. They just didn't have the same sort of natural, lifelike feeling that Jurassic World Evolution gave us. And then on top of that, I thought that this creature felt a little bit just odd. Almost like someone had come and skinned it, and it was left looking like that. But after I tried to kind of get over that initial shock of not being able to tell whether I liked it or not, and I actually looked at what was going on, I think it's starting to slowly grow on me. Because if you take a look at this, there's some really nice looking reflections and lighting and all sorts of crazy things going on on the crest of this creature as well as the horns. It even almost looks like there's some ambient occlusion or something going on, I'm not really sure and the bump maps, you can just see all the little tiny details in there. It just really makes it feel like it's actually right here and lifelike. And, and I will be honest, I'm still not really sure I'm totally sold on this one. I think I might actually like the old Nasutoceratops better, but seeing the actual, like the bump mapping and the lighting and everything, I think that does look quite a bit better than Jurassic World Evolution. I think it's mainly just the texturing that they've gone with that's probably throwing me off here. 
But other than that, I think that this is a pretty beautiful creature. Okay, now moving on to the next image here, we have the Stegosaurus. And can we just take a second to just look at the detail in this? I'll bring up a little side image here of the old Stegosaurus. And if you just kind of take a second to look back and forth for a bit, there is just so much detail in this that we did not have before. Before all of the Jurassic World Evolution dinosaurs looked almost like they were smooth, almost like they were made out of like a blubbery sort of material in a ways. And these ones, they feel like they're actual like real skin. You can see so many veins running down them and so many just little details that you couldn't notice before. Even the plates of the Stegosaurus, they just have at least some sort of interesting details on them, whereas before there was just kind of like one big plate of brown going down it. Even like the little nicks and scratches on here, we've got like really unique sort of skins and everything here and it just it's really nice to take a look at really. But, I mean as we can also see here we've got some beautiful little water reflections down at the base here. We've got more rocks and everything that people can use and all sorts of different cactus and things yet again like we saw in the last image there with the Amargosaurus. And I would just say that this is exciting and even if you take a quick peek into the background here, I'm not sure if you've noticed yet or not, but it almost looks as though that could be a monorail. I think I've actually decided that it's just the roof of a building, but I had a bit of a debate with somebody about it. And they're still not entirely convinced that this isn't a monorail. I'm starting to believe it's not, but I mean, hey, I'll just throw out the possibility that I guess it could be since we never really came to an agreement on that. And now I could just be seeing something from nothing here, but if I take a look at the buildings here, I feel like they look way less modern like they do in a couple of the other images, which almost leads me to believe that the different environments will have different building styles, which I would really like, because I'm not entirely sold on the super modern buildings that we see on the normal main street of the, the big park that we'll see in the next image here in just a moment. But that being said, like if you take a look at these here, notice how they're nice soft brown textures matching the environment and even this here it almost looks like a thatched roof it could just be a really big boulder or something but it almost looks like a thatched roof and now keep that in mind whenever we move to this next series of images here and we see these buildings here on this main street as you can immediately notice there is a lot going on but if you take a look down here the buildings are super modern and i just don't know if i'm 100 percent sold on that yet the buildings look interesting and all, but I would like to have the option to not have these super modern buildings because I'm just not sure if I'm quite on board with them yet, but maybe that's just me. This building on the other hand, I'm not sure if this is an arrival pad or something, but I actually really do like this building. I think it looks quite nice. Looking over here, we can even see like a little bit of a red ring around the base of the fence. And at first I thought that this could actually be like a wooden fence, which would be something new and exciting. But then as I looked closer, I started to think that this could actually be just a red path, like a red dirt road that the gyrospheres or tour vehicles could go driving along. And then in a later image that'll come up, you'll actually see that it is the fence, but you'll see that when we get to it. What you may have immediately noticed is that this over here looks to be almost like, almost like it could be an aquatic exhibit seeing as it's on the water. But the more we looked at it and the more that we discussed this, Jurassic Alien and I were having a debate about this as well, we almost could think that it could be almost like those rainforest exhibits they can go to in a zoo where it's all enclosed and this could actually be like the aviary and that the pterodactyls and everything could go flying around in here and that this park could have just had their aviary next to the ocean anyways even though it doesn't actually have anything to do with the aquatic creatures. And furthermore why we think that this is actually an aviary and not an aquatic thing even though it is right by the ocean is if you take a look inside there are actually small little green and orange blobs poking up which I'm pretty sure are just these orange and green trees in there. I'm pretty sure that these are just going to be where the pterodactyls will go flying around or your dimorphodons or whatever frontier might add into the game. But anyways, I'm pretty sure they could just go flying around here. That'd be cool to have like a little microraptor exhibit where they can go gliding around from tree branch to tree branch and scuttle along the bottom of the floor. I think that would be quite neat. Of course, we also have many buildings that were in Dress World Evolution making a return into this game, such as the hatchery, the gates, these viewing platforms, even the viewing vent way down here as well as the ranger station or ACU unit. I always get those two mixed up, but either way, that's here. I'm not entirely sure what this little unit is right here, but it's interesting to look at. And I think this here is actually the research center. I feel like that's the shape that it was before, but it just could have been modified to have these glass panels down the back. I don't know, it could be an entirely new building. It could not even be the research center and still be something existing in the game that I'm just not recognizing. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the research center and it just has had a, a slight change in the, uh, the, the model. Of course, you've got the power station having a little sneak in the background there as well. One last thing that you'll notice here in this image is the fact that there are trees of so many different varying sizes, shapes, colors, and whatnot. 
Like as you can see if we look right down here we've got some very tiny little trees, some super tall ones like this one here, and then everything in between. And if you take a look at the Steam notes for this game, then you can actually find out that there will be many more ways to customize your park than before. And I get the hunch that this is going to be sort of like Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, Prehistoric Kingdom sort of modular building where you can actually change the scale, rotation, and the transformations of all different things so that we can get it exactly how we want and get really detailed and unique in our customization. And I think that's just about all that this image has to offer. Moving on to the next image, we get a peek at the Coelophysis. On stream I originally thought this was actually going to be Segisaurus, but now it's confirmed that this is actually a Coelophysis, which is very exciting to see some more small creatures. Not as small as the copy, but still quite small, probably like in between the Compi and Trudon size, I'm actually not 100% confident on that. I just think they look about that size, but it could actually be bigger than what I'm realizing. But as you can see here in this exhibit, this is also back into the snowy-ish sort of mountain area. So you've got much more green trees than those in the desert that we were viewing just earlier. Some beautiful like pine sort of trees, I'm not an expert on my trees or anything, I just know that these are... Some really nice lush looking green ones and I think that they would look really cool in some exhibits. Overall I'm a really big fan of the way that this Coelophysis skin model everything looks. I really especially love, you can't really see it too well in this image, but if you looked at the uh, the trailer you could see that it has like a little hook in the bottom of its jaw, sort of like the Spinosaurus, how people draw that in there. And I just, I'm a big fan of the way that this little Coelophysis looks. And I'm excited to include this guy in some of my future park builds whenever this game does come out. Moving on to this image here, this one was actually very surprising to me because if you take a look, this one feels very military-like to me. Because think about it, whenever you think of the military, what color do you think of? You think of like a darkish sort of green, right? Well of course that's the primary color that you'll see in these buildings. Not to mention, take a look at specifically this building here. I don't know what they're called in the military, I've never been in the military, I don't really plan on it, but I've seen movies before and this is just straight out of a military movie. It looks like some sort of little storage area where they could like work on some vehicles or have like medical supplies. I'm not really sure what you want to do there at the military, but uh, this just feels like the sort of building that you would see there. Same with all these here. That looks like a military helicopter on a military helipad, but even with like the airplane sort of hangar style on this building here. This is just screaming military to me. Which we do know is the direction that Hoskins and the gang wanted to go into from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and the original Jurassic World. Furthermore, if these were military dinosaurs, you can even see there's a small enclosure here with what I'm actually just now noticing looks like maybe a triceratops in there? It's very blurry, but there's like two little legs, the crest, some horns, and a tail right there. See that little guy? <laughs> just me? Anyways, that being said, I'm thinking this looks like the place where they could perform their experiments on their new hybrid creepy creatures of the Black Lagoon and send them out to the field to test on them and see what improvements they could make and how they can make these things the ultimate military weapon. Moving on to the next image, we actually have the Pteranodon here, and you'll notice a couple interesting things. At first glance, I thought that this was the same park from the beginning, but after looking at it closer, I'm not entirely convinced it is. Because if you look at that first image, then you'll see that there's one big triangle looking dome thing in the background. But here, we're inside the dome, and we can still see two more in the corners over there, which is very interesting. Because that was definitely not in the first image, unless it was just somehow out of frame, even though it looks like it's really not that far away from it from here, and I don't know. I'm just convinced that this is a different image. That being said, we can see that the inside of this place is not going to be just some cliffs and everything where the pteranodons can fly around and land on like an animation. I am pretty convinced that they're just going to be flying around naturally, landing on different trees and just kind of moving about almost like a regular creature would in an exhibit, only these in a 3D space. Also worth looking at, there are many different buildings in the background of different colors and everything, which makes me even more convinced that this will be more of a planet zoo, planet coaster sort of customization style, where you can change all the different colors and styles of the buildings, because if you look here, we've got almost what looks to be like a, um, like a Chinese restaurant or something, I'm not sure, or it could just be a little person, and that's not actually letters of some sort. And we've got some like dark red colors and some yellows in certain areas. If we move over to this one, it's all blue and then here's some orange and there's even a splash of purple right here. Like there's no set theme. So it seems like everything could be customized into certain different ways to fill all of your little hopes and dreams of how you want to make your park look. In this image here, you can get a close-up look at the main street and you can see all these different buildings and colors and combinations that we were just talking about before. This is, I'm convinced, actually the same one that we saw in just the previous frame. 
just from the main street instead of inside the big bird dome. So as you can see here on the left we have the cinema. Next to that it looks like we have the arcade building from Jurassic World Evolution. I'm not too sure, I just remember that's the only one that had these big weird triangle things on them. We've got what almost looks like to be maybe ice cream or something like that in this building here. And then of course we've got a bowling alley right up here in front. And this goes back to the whole colors thing. As you can see, there is just a whole rainbow of colors here, which leads me to believe that we can interchange all these different colors to whatever makes us happy, because there is no sort of theme going on right here. And now here it is, folks. The big magical image, the best one of the bunch in my opinion. The one and only Tyrannosaurus Rex. We all know her and love her as Rexy. But just take a look at this. As you can see, this is definitely a different model from Jurassic World Evolution. At least they sure do make it look like that. If it's not, I'm just going to look like an idiot here. That being said, this Rex, in my super professional opinion, looks miles better than what we had in Jurassic World Evolution. The Rex in Jurassic World Evolution did not look bad by any means, but this is just that much better. Jurassic World Evolution's T-Rex kind of had a tendency to look kind of scrawny and old and beat up. But if we take a look at this one, we can see it's much more bigger and beefier and bulky, and it just looks like a... A nice, fit, healthy Rex. Also taking a look at the face, we can see so many nice details and uh, quite honestly, this just looks like it's plucked straight off the animatronic of the 1993 film and placed here on this little textured model thingy mabobber just for us special park builders to use. It looks absolutely stunning and the environment around it looks beautiful as well. I'm assuming that this is also in the snowy area because we've got some nice big piney looking trees. I'm sure that these are actually more of the redwood sort of trees. But one way or another, they look great, and all I know for sure is that this isn't the desert, really. Let's be honest here. What you can also notice is we do have a reappearance of the Jurassic Park 3 style fence, which we only were able to unlock in Return to Jurassic Park, which feature these large barbed spikes on top of the fence. That way you know that there's a dangerous creature within this exhibit. And now moving on to the last image of the day, we have some beautiful Triceratops. And what you will notice right off the bat is that these look nothing like the Triceratops that we had in Evolution. Instead, you may notice that these are brand new skins that we have never seen in Evolution before. Which is very exciting to think that Frontier will kind of have a, a second try at the whole skin thing, seeing as a lot of people were, quite honestly, not too thrilled with the, the skins that Evolution had to offer the previous game. Also something that you may have noticed, however, is the fact that these buildings right here, the hatchery, has been slightly modified. It looks slightly more modern. It's got a couple different details that have changed since the previous game, but nothing game-changing. And now these 11 images here were actually all that was available from Jurassic World Evolution 2's new website. But that being said, there are two other images from Jurassic World Evolution 2's Steam page, which we will now take a look at. Starting with this Triceratops here, this, honestly, I think is one of the most exciting images of the whole bunch. Because if you take a look right over here, we can see a return of a feature from Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. At least that's the way it looks. Sure, this might not be true, but it's the way it looks, so I'm going to point it out. If you take a look right here, there's a little shed with a security camera attached to a pole right here in the middle of the exhibit, which makes me believe that we will get a return of some features from JPOG, such as this security camera, where we could watch our dinosaurs and help the park guests feel more at ease and make them believe that they're safer, even though when they're really not, let's be honest here. Also taking a look over here at the left, as I mentioned earlier, here's that fence again, and it is actually right at the bottom, which is interesting. I'm not sure if this is a new fence or if we're just going to be able to customize the design of our fences now. But one way or another, we will have the ability to apparently have a fence that's red on the bottom and black on the top. Maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. And then of course we do have the return of the gyrosphere gates right here, but I don't think that was too surprising for anybody. And if you take a look at this Triceratops here with all of its details and compare it to Jurassic World Evolution, you can see that this just is packed with more details and different little design aspects when comparing it to that previous model. The previous one almost looked like it was just one big smooth texture all the way from skin to horns, whereas this one just feels like you can see every little crease of age on this creature and see all the little bumps of the scales and everything. And even taking just a look at the horns, you can see that there's actual reflections in the horns of this Triceratops, whereas in the previous one, it almost felt like it was just the same sort of skin applied to the horn. Because if you take a look down at your fingernails, which is made of the same material, then you can actually see just reflections all the time whenever you're just like here in a room that has any light at all. So it's really nice to see those reflections actually kind of make a difference on this Triceratops right here. And finally, here's the last image of the day, the Coelophysis, which I was telling you about before, which highlights the little crook in the teeth. And that's really all that's new in this image. I mean, there's some more terrain and stuff. This water is extremely blue right here. 
Uh, but that's about it. I think it's a little bit weird to see the toes, how there's no really like shadow around them, which almost makes it feel kind of floaty. I'm not sure why that is, but something about that just feels a little off to me. With that being said, I'm still very excited for the Coelophysis and all these other beautiful terrain elements in the background that you can see here from the purpley bushes to the yellow trees to this big old purpley bush to the really tall trees to this dead tree. I don't know, there's just so many different things and ways to customize and spice up our park and make it look all pretty. Or ugly if we just want to use a bunch of dead trees, I guess, but that's not the point. So with that being said, I think that's actually going to have to just about do it for us today. If you noticed anything in these images that I did not, or if you think that you have any theories or comments that I may have missed on, then just let me know down below and we can maybe take a peek at them another day. But with that being said, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.